Oh wait, I forgot to put. I forgot to put a lippy on. Dulce nude from Nude Sticks. Oh, it's so yummy and it's caramelly. Beautiful. Okay, let's get into it. Welcome to my channel for today's video. It is time for the most important series on my channel, my speed reviews. If you're new to my channel, I make sure I test everything that I talk about and mention on this channel multiple times and then I will put it in a speed review. So all of these are products that I've used multiple times in multiple ways with multiple products so that I can finally give you my final thoughts on all of these products today. We have 25 makeup products that I am ready to give you the low down on. So let's go ahead and get into it. Starting with complexion, I feel like the last many speed reviews have had a lot of complexion. This is the shortest complexion round ever. It's shifting over to the lips, which is funny because for a while lips was the shortest round. Anyways, we're gonna get started with what I used as a base today. This is from Catrice. It's the All Over Glow Tint. These are all right. I actually really like them for before a tinted moisturizer or a tinted serum, just anything lightweight because the glow does really come through and it looks almost wet on the skin. Now these, they say you can use over makeup on top of makeup, mixed with makeup. I like this under makeup personally, but it obviously needs to have lighter coverage or you're not going to be able to see it. When I put this over makeup, it just looks a little messed up. It doesn't look good over makeup. So I don't like this as a liquid highlighter over top of makeup, but it is really pretty as an all over base. It's an okay product. Not the best, not the worst. Okay, I've given this multiple tries again lately because I didn't like it the first time I used it, but it's one of these ball products. This is the Jane Iredale Hydro Pure Tinted Serum. Unfortunately, I'm just not a fan of this. I find it difficult to work out. It doesn't really do much on my skin. I know it's a tinted serum. There really is almost no tint, and it just looks not good for being such a sheer product. This is difficult to work out because you almost need to work out the balls. It just looks looks uneven and I'm not shading it because it doesn't have much coverage. I have products that don't have much coverage that I love. The balls, they just don't have a smooth blend out and you guys know I just recently picked up the Chanel Ball Foundation and that is like gorgeous magical perfection. This one is difficult to use, so I'm personally not a fan. I've tried it multiple ways. The best way is to use a hand, but for the price tag, I just find this too difficult to use. I also have been using this from Bare Minerals. This is the Complexion Ready Tinted Hydrating Gel Cream. I wasn't a fan of the concealer version of this because I felt like it was grainy. I also feel like this is kind of grainy as well. Now, not nearly as grainy as my concealer, which I felt like had actual grains of sand in there. This, I can work out the graininess on my skin and it looks okay, but it just doesn't stand out in the realm of tinted moisturizers. It's not bad, but it also, it's not really that good. So not a standout product. It's just one of these products where I'm gonna keep it in my collection. I'm gonna reach for it if I feel like it looks lonely, but once it's done or expired, probably won't be repurchasing. I have two products from Gosh. If you aren't familiar with this brand, this is one of the products, or these are two products that I picked up while I was in Spain. This is a European drugstore brand. So these are their take on the Charlotte Tilbury products. We have the Shape Up Cream Contour, which is really, really nice. It is a bit of a weird tone, but I can definitely make it work. It blends out beautifully. I think this is a great alternative if you are in the European market for the Charlotte Tilbury Beauty One. It's not a dupe at all. The formulations are completely different. The packaging is, however, the same, and I think it's just a nice alternative. However, I don't think this one touches the Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Gosh Blush Up Cream Blush. I find that this is a little patchy and a little metallic in an unflattering way. I can get the job done with this. It doesn't look bad. If you really just cannot spend money on the Charlotte Tilbury one, you can totally go for something like this. But the formula to me, just reviewing it on its own, it's a little patchy, a little bit more difficult to use and just not as flattering. So I don't love this but I do like the cream contour. I also have this blush from Colfi. This is the Mendy Moment Blush in the shade Pinky Promise. This one, unlike a lot of the liquid and cream blushes right now, 
does not have a dewy finish. This one is actually quite matte. So I think if you have oily skin and you're looking for a cream or liquid blush, this one might be a good one because it can suck up a little bit of those oils. Very pretty color, nice level of pigmentation, but easy to work with and customize the level of pigmentation that you're going to get. This is a solid formula. I like this and I really think it's special because it's great for oily skin. Okay, e.l.f. came out with their camo liquid blushes. I think these are a phenomenal dupe for the Rare Beauty. I will add some caution with the more vibrant shades. I find that on me those can patch up a little bit for some reason, but like the more neutral lighter shades I don't have any issues with at all. I actually have been reaching for these over the Rare Beauty, not because they're better by any means, but because they're pretty much the same. I think it's amazing for no makeup makeup days or when my skin is feeling really dry and I don't want a lot of product on my face, I'll use this as my blush and it does feel rather hydrating. These are phenomenal. ELF did a great job duping being these. One of my favorite dupes from e.l.f. for sure. So I picked this product up from Tower 28 when I was doing a Tower 28 versus another brand video and I never picked this up before because I truly didn't feel like I would like a product like this. This is the Super Dew No Shade. It's like a clear liquid highlighter and normally I don't like these because I feel like they feel like a lip gloss over top of my skin and they normally look patchy. This one does not. This is one of the best kind of glossy highlighters I've ever used. It doesn't act weird or funky on top of powder or anything and it really does add that dewy wet look on the cheek. I don't like products like this, but this one is really nice. The fact that I like this speaks volume. It's like everything Tower 28 creates is gold. This is one of those. Three products for eyebrows. I have a hidden gem here to start us off from Jane Iredale. This is the Pure Brow Brow Gel. Now this one is tinted and I normally am a tinted brow gel hater because I feel like they look so messy. This is the only tinted brow gel that I love and that I can actually fill in my brows with and not have it look messy. I don't know what the magic in this is, but it makes my brows look fluffy, but it still holds the shape. And still somehow with the applicator, I'm able to give my brows a shape. It's not a mess that I have to go in and clean up after later. So I actually have been enjoying this for really quick brow days where I want a little bit of color. I find that I can get a shaped look with this somehow. Can't explain it any further. It's amazing. The best tinted brow gel I've ever used. So this one I tried over the holiday season from Profusion. It's their clear brow gel and I think when I first used it, I was not impressed. I have to say this has more hold than I was expecting. And then I realized the first time, it actually holds the brows really nice but it also is really light. The only thing is it takes a really long time to dry it down, but this is a great everyday brow gel and it's affordable. I'm happy with this and I'm very picky with brows. The last brow product that I have is from NYX. This is a classic, it just took me a long time to try. This is the Lift and Snatch Brow Tint Pen. And normally I don't like a pen, but this is actually amazing. It doesn't distribute too much pigment, it's not too overwhelming, and it really does allow you to get those brow-like strokes. Is it going to replace a pencil for me? No. I love a brow pencil over a pen, but this is one of the best pens I've ever used. So if you like pens or you're starting off with very, very little sparse brows, this is a good one to go with. Rare Beauty, I have tried new colors of their eyeshadow sticks. I love these, I've reviewed the eyeshadow sticks before. I have a new favorite color now. Now I still have my favorite one and I can't remember the name of it, but you know that light pink one? That one's my number one favorite, but my number two favorite is Contentment. This one is a pretty bronzy gold all over the eyelid. I've been enjoying also using the shade Compassion, which is a shade that I wouldn't normally use, but like blending this into my lash line for a little bit of definition has been really pretty. These are super creamy and they do set down. I don't find that these crease, like my eyes will get one crease right here where my eye fold is, but I'm not even really bothered by that because my eye does fold there. These are one of my favorite eyeshadow stick formulas and I've been enjoying these new colors. Before I was really only just talking about one shade, but now I'm here to update you that I'm enjoying the other shades that the line has to offer. Also one that I failed at updating you guys on for a long time, so I'm finally getting back to it. This is the Flower Beauty New Light Eyeshadow Palette. So these are all cream eyeshadows. We have Garden Light and Coastal Light. 
Garden Lights is better than Coastal Lights, but Coastal Lights is smoother. The Garden Lights can get a little bit messier, almost like a little bit more foiled, if you know what I mean. So I'm using the shade Ivy down here all over my eyelid. These are kind of similar to the Rare Beauty, where they do get the one crease where my crease is. But overall, I think these have pretty good longevity for being a drugstore product. I think that these are phenomenal. You really can't tell that these are from the drugstore. They swatch so thick and pigmented and they have a lot of reflection to them. If you're looking for something more natural, go with Coastal Lights. The finishes of these are more like a true shimmer, whereas the Garden Lights is going to give you more of a foiled effect. If you're a fan of cream eyeshadows that you can just pop on on the eyelid, I definitely recommend these. You don't have to break the bank. You get six different shades. These are such a good pickup from the drugstore. A couple of eyeliners. The first are from House Labs. These are the Eco eyeliners. I have a brown shade and a nude shade. Honestly, these aren't anything to write home about. They are a fine eyeliner, but to me, they're just the kind of run-of-the-mill formula. It's not overly creamy. There is a little bit of drag. I have a lot of eye pencils that I prefer over these. I'm not turning my nose up at them. I'll keep these in my collection, but these are not a formula I'm running out to repurchase again, so they're just kind of an okay eyeliner formula. Too much drag in my opinion and I think you do need to build up the color a little bit too much. Okay and then I have this one which I messed up. I have to throw this one away. This is more so on me. The Too Faced Killer Eyeliner. The cap fell off and it completely dried out. So it was okay. I'm pretty much gonna say it's on the same level as the House Labs. Definitely more creamy though but don't let it dry out. I'm not repurchasing it though, so that should tell you it's not a game changer. You'll never see this in my collection again though, because I dried it out and messed it up. We're on to the biggest category, lips, which really just seem like what everybody is launching these days. So first I have this new holiday flavor from Laneige. I don't know, it's been sitting in my speed reviews drawer, and I'm finally ready to get back to you on the peppermint glowy balm. This doesn't have any color to it. I wish it had more of a tint. I really like these glowy balms. I think they're hydrating. I think they have a really pretty glow and there is a little bit of a pepperminty feel to these. Standard formula. I wish it had more of a tint. It's fine. I also added three new colors to my Sephora Collection Gel Lip Liner Collection. I love these because you can use these as all over lipsticks and they have an endless range of colors. For today, I am wearing the shade Monarch. This is such a pretty nude lip liner. I really didn't end up being crazy about Rosewood what, like I thought I would. It just ended up being a little bit too intense for what I was looking for. And same thing with Rose Wine. These are going to be beautiful on medium and deeper complexions. I thought I would love these, but just the colors in general were too much for what I was reaching for on the daily. But I still do love this formula. Next up, I have another kind of tinted lip balm formulation to review for you guys. These are the Nude Sticks Lip Butters. I've been thoroughly enjoying my time with these. So these are actually one of the most truly pigmented lip butters that I've ever used. It's not like super pigmented, but you actually get color from them. Even the shade Dulce Nude, which is what I'm wearing today, it actually leaves color on the lips. Candy Kiss is the perfect pink sugar plum. Kind of dark, honestly. A little too tinted for me. Normally for these tinted balms, I go for the darkest just to even see color. This, a lot of color. And there is a clear one as well. Comparing these to the Summer Fridays, these are a little bit more wet, a little bit more liquidy. Almost, I would say, more true to a lip gloss kind of formulation. Really good longevity, very nice hydration. I am enjoying these. I feel like not a lot of people talk about these, but these ones are not to be slept on in terms of the tinted lip balm market. And just in my opinion, they have the best tints and they also have great smells and flavors. So don't forget about these. These ones are really good too. These unfortunately are no longer sold. I missed the boat on that. I got the package really late, but this is a gorgeous nude lip in case it does ever come back. This is the e.l.f. Dirty Pillows collaboration that they did with Jennifer Coolidge. I wasn't sure how we would feel about this nude lip, but it's like the perfect nude lip. It's a gorgeous combination and you know, the cream lip liner right here. Love this formula, need to purchase more colors. I'm not too crazy on the lip gloss formulation, but it's fine. And then they also have just a really solid affordable lipstick. 
All three of these are great, especially if you have a lighter skin tone, I would say. If these do ever happen to come back in stock, I definitely recommend this set. It's beautiful. I also have this color lipstick from CoverGirl in the shade Decadent Peach. I have to say the CoverGirl lipstick formulation, not really my favorite. I feel like when I layer it on too much, the color separates and it just doesn't look even on the lips, even in a thin layer. I think you can just get better formulas out there on the drugstore. That being said, this lip is very pretty, the color I mean. If you add like a neutral lip liner and then this peach, it adds such a pretty pop to the face, but the formulation just not up to par for what you can get at this price point as well. Go L'Oreal, go Maybelline, go Revlon. CoverGirl to me just doesn't create the best lipstick. At least that one. I purchased a mini set of lipsticks from Kosas. I think there was a third one. I have to dig it up somewhere. But in the demo, I used the shade Fantasy Life. I love how tiny and cute these are. This is a really beautiful, creamy formulation. Definitely super solid. It reminds me of the Charlotte Tilbury Kissing formulation. So this is another alternative you can go to if you can't purchase Charlotte Tilbury. No, I really like this lipstick formulation. Really smooth, really pigmented, very hydrating. Not much else I can say. And this little set was just so cute. Good formula. I also picked this up during the holidays from House Labs. This is their lip crayon in Mocha Matte. This is such a pretty like deep, bold lip but not too bold, it's still quite wearable. Really great for the winter time, even though we are coming up on spring. A nice lightweight formula. This is my second in this formulation. I have to say I wasn't super moved the first few times that I used this, but now that I've had this longer, I actually like how thin this is on the lips. It's a good formula and I like the shape that this is. It's very easy to apply. So this is actually quite pretty. I've also been using this from Flower Beauty. This is the Color Shift Lip Smoothie. It's a hydrating lip treatment slash gloss. It does not have much longevity. So honestly, I'm not too big of a fan of this. It adds a pretty pink tint to the lips, but it disappears relatively quickly. So I don't think there's anything too special about this. I used it a handful of times and every time I completely forgot I had it on my lips because it disappeared, so yeah. Now these are from, an, oh geez. Now these are from an indie brand, Fantasy Cosmetica. They launched these lip oils and the colors are scary. And if I'm going to be honest, some of them are scary on the lips. Definitely not purchasing these to be flattering. I demoed the black one for you. Like it's a sheer black on the lips. So I can't say I've been wearing these out. However, the scents on these are insanely yummy so i will put these on just because it's a wonderful experience in particular this warlock ifrit shade smells like the little jelly containers that i used to get from the asian grocery store i'll see if i can find a photo online but they're like little individual jellies that you pop in your mouth this smells exactly like those so the second I opened this up, it was a shot of nostalgia right in my face. I'll never get rid of this, even though I think the color is heinous. The smell is so good, childhood. And all of these have different flavors. Like this dark purple one has this strong artificial grape flavor. Again, really nostalgic scents for me. This sheer red though is very pretty. What does this one smell like? Oh, so good. I love the way they smell, they smell like candy from my childhood. So the colors are kind of ugly. Dehydration, quite beautiful. But the smell, the smell is keeping me on these. I love these. And even though I'm not a fan of the colors, like that's the aesthetic of the brand. So if these colors do float your boat, even better. And then the last thing, I featured quite a lot of House Labs, I feel like, in this video. But I already knew I loved the House Labs lip oils. So over the holidays, they sent me the mini PhD hybrid lip oil trio. I jumped at keeping this. That's $29, and these are so tiny and cute, making them great for travel. These are an amazing lip oil. They last a long time. They're not sticky at all. And I really like the pink one because it really does do that hybrid pH thing where it turns pink and it's really, really pretty. House Labs definitely has one of my favorite lip oil formulations. So I was excited about this and I've been loving these little cuties. Whew, we did that one fast. 
go me. There we have it. 25 makeup reviews of products that I have been thoroughly testing and finally feel comfortable enough to give you my opinion on these. I still have a pretty full speed reviews drawer that I need to start working on, but patience. Can't review them until I really know how I feel about them. So I hope you guys love this speed review series as much as I do. You can let me know by liking this video and commenting down below. Make sure you subscribe to my channel to see more speed reviews. I do these every two to three weeks, I would say. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Have a good one. I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys, have a good one. Thank <laughs> you.